It is probably not lost on you or on most Americans that it is difficult out there price-wise when it comes to housing. Whether you're renting or buying, it's trouble. And it's been trouble for a number of years, particularly as the interest rates have gone up. The price of buying a house, especially in certain markets, has risen as well. It feels more out of reach for the average American than ever before. And so it's a topic that should be focused on during this presidential race, thankfully, uh, President Kamala Harris, at the, or Vice President Kamala Harris, I'm getting ahead of myself, at the very least, is paying attention to this. Take a look at this ad. For most of my childhood, we were renters. My mother saved for well over a decade to buy a home. I was a teenager when that day finally came, and I can remember so well how excited she was. I know what home ownership means. And sadly, right now, it is out of reach for far too many American families. During the foreclosure crisis, I took on the big banks who exploited people in the housing market. And today, corporate landlords buy hundreds of houses and apartments, then turn them around and rent them out at extremely high prices. I will fight for a law that cracks down on these practices. We will end America's housing shortage by building three million new homes and rentals. We should be doing everything we can to make it more affordable to buy a home, not less. Okay, so this is referring to the policies that we'd previously broken down, I think, two Fridays ago on the damage report. And I'm glad that she's got this ad sort of touting this plan because there's a lot to like about this plan. Um, first of all, you need to have more housing, like you need the supply. And I don't know why that hasn't been a bigger focus of Biden's four years. I don't know why Donald Trump didn't do this, um, but it is going to be a focus of this plan. Harris uh, will call for constructing three million new housing units, uh, a tax incentive for home builders to construct starter homes to sell to first time home buyers rather than perhaps building, you know, like huge suites of expensive condos or something. And a 40 billion dollar innovation fund for local governments to build housing as well. I think I, in that last bit, I hadn't previously seen detailed in the plan. So it seems like they are trying to be thoughtful and they're trying to approach the, the the topic, the issue of getting more housing built in a variety of different ways. And you need to do that. A storm is tearing up the digital media industry. Only our audience can save us in these difficult times. Help us reach our goal of 100,000 new members at tyt.com slash team. So they're providing some tax incentives and they're also saying that it's not going to be just a federal thing that we're doing. At the same time, they're going to be providing uh, a sort of subsidy to first time homeowners with twenty five thousand dollars in down payment support. Now, I know a lot of people have greeted that by saying, well, that just automatically raises the price of housing by twenty five thousand dollars. I don't think that that's how it works. It could in some markets contribute to an increase in the price. But so long as first time homeowners are not the only people bidding on these houses, if you artificially raise the price by 25,000, then you're going to be cutting quite a few of your potential customers. So I think it's more complicated than the initial knee-jerk reaction to that part was. But importantly, it's not the only thing that they're doing. And if we can move on to this final bit, I think this is important. The plan includes expanding rental assistance for eligible Americans as well. So this is not just about homeowners. It's about renters as well. Uh, by enforcing fair housing laws. She'll call for legislation to crack down on companies contributing to surging rent prices and legislation to remove tax benefits for major investors who acquire large numbers of single-family rental homes. And that is something that on TYT we've been talking about for a number of years. So basically, you have, and I, I don't want to be like a broken record, but I'm pretty sure John Oliver had a great breakdown of this a number of years ago. At the local and state level, you can have just a company or two that buys up so much of the housing in an area that they effectively operate as a monopoly when it comes to setting rent prices. It is no longer a free market if you own 70% of the housing. That should be broken apart. And I like that they're talking about removing tax benefits. I would do more than that. I would literally break apart the companies. I would set a cap on what percentage of a market of rental homes or rentals or even houses that you're going to sell that you should be able to own. And they're savvy, these companies. They're going to figure out some ways to get around that. So you have to stick on the topic and make sure that there are not companies perverting the free market and making it so that the prices inevitably go up. So I think this is a great first pass at this. 
it's going to be interesting to see whether any Republicans are willing to actually participate in this. They, after all, say that they care about the price of housing, the price of rentals. Will they actually do anything to get it down? That'll be an interesting question if she gets elected. But this should be an important part of the election, and I'm glad that she's focusing on it. When you click the Join button and become a Tier 2 member, you get access to all of our weekly Top 10 lists. What are you waiting for?